Hey, welcome to part two of our production cost section. Uh, this section is actually quite a bit shorter. We're just going to talk about how we take what we've learned about the short run and think about the long run. So, in the long run, right? The, what's the key different? The key difference in the long run? It's that the fixed inputs can be varied, right? So if you're if you're Domino's Pizza, right? In the short term, you are renting out a building, right? And it might cost you $1,000 a month and you book for a year at a time. So in the short term, it doesn't matter whether you even go out of business, you still have to pay that $1,000 a month, right? That's $1,000 a month, month in, month out, there's nothing you can do about it. Eventually though, that lease comes up and you can adjust the building size. If you are not selling very much, maybe a smaller building will be fine, right? You save a little money on cost, can still do everything you need to do. If you are really selling a lot, maybe a bigger building's needed. Yes, it will cost a little bit more in terms of the rent each month, but it might be easier to produce more pizza where you can make more money. Well, in the long run, you can adjust. Because of that, in the long run, at worst, you'll be doing exactly the same as the short run. Now, I want to clarify what we mean by this. It doesn't mean that the business will always survive, right? But if all of the conditions stay exactly the same, you are better off in the long run because you have more flexibility. So in the long term, you could adjust the fixed input levels that you have. You have more flexibility. Um, at worst, your production costs will stay the same. So in the long run, um, the way we'll think about the long run average cost curve is it will be the minimum points of every single short run average cost curve, right? Say so you're Domino's and you could pick one of 25 different buildings, all of slightly different sizes. Each of those buildings is going to come with a short run average total cost curve. Well, in the long run, you get to choose whichever building you want. Because of that, in the long run, the cost overall should be lower. And this type of graph, and I don't even think you need to write this graph down. Maybe you do. The textbook has something like this uh, as well. Um, it's the idea that here we have five different short run average cost curves on, on our slides and one long run average cost curve that consists of the minimum points of every short run average cost curve. So if your production level is low, right, quantities on the x-axis, you might want to get the smallest building size and here's your average cost. As you expand, on average your cost might drop a little bit. The right building size for you depends on how many pizzas you're selling, if this is for Domino's Pizza. Right? If you're selling a whole lot, you want to go into the building number five, which hits you the short run average cost curve number five, and you're in this neighborhood. Now, in the short term, right, you can adjust. So if you're in building three, right, that's the best for this level of quantity. But if all of a sudden you start to sell this much, right, while you're stuck in the current building size, your costs are higher. Your costs are up here. Once you can switch to the better building for the production level you're doing, the costs drop down again. So in the long run, the costs, at worst, the worst case is they're the same as the short run, but it in um, oftentimes could actually be a little bit lower. The final thing we'll mention is the idea of economies of scale or the scales of production, economies of scale being one of the scales of production. Um, economies of scale, and this is a term that's going to keep coming back at us, but uh, economies of scale, this occurs when the long run average cost curve declines as the firm increases output. This is an especially important concept if, if a firm always has economies of scale. And there are some industries where that'll happen. Um, so when would the long run average cost always keep declining? Well, if you think about it, the way it happens is when you have an enormous fixed cost, but then the variable cost per unit is always extremely small. So what are a couple of cases where this might happen? Um, power generation, right? water and sewage treatment plants, both of those that cost an enormous amount to build the facility, millions and millions of dollars. But for a power plant, it costs millions 
millions of dollars to create the power plant. How much does it cost to add one new customer? Almost nothing. I mean, next to zero, right? You just have to extend the line to the next house. Uh, the marginal cost for one more customer is very, very close to zero. Well, that means as you add more people, as the quantity increases, the average cost keeps declining. Same for water and sewage treatment plants. Same for a lot of software, right? Uh, Microsoft Office might cost billions to come up with a new version. What does it cost to get that into the hands of one more customer? What, a quarter? If it's downloaded off of the internet, maybe not, probably not even that much. If it's packaged in a box with the CD and mail, then maybe 50 cents to a dollar. Um, but you know, the billion fixed cost dwarfs that, so each extra unit they sell, the costs keep dropping lower and lower. That is an important, really important concept, and it's going to keep coming back. Um, it has implications for how a market looks when we start to look at, is it competitive, is it a monopoly? So definitely know what this is. Uh, constant returns to scale. This means the average cost curve always stays constant as the firm increases output. Negative returns to scale says as the firm produces more output, their average cost increases. And you can actually have all of these on for the same firm, depending on how much you're producing. And just looking at this long run average total cost curve, right? We have a point where they have economies of scale. As they produce more output, the costs drop. We have a point where it's about constant, right? It's about flat in here. Maybe not quite exactly flat, but it's pretty close to constant returns to scale in this production range. But eventually there's negative returns to scale as the firm increases output. One more graph that kind of shows this a little bit, right? Some short run average cost curves, the long run costs, you have economies of scale as the average costs drop, diseconomies of scale as the average costs are increased.